What's up YouTube, Steerdog here, new video today, going to be doing in-depth card reviews on the new cool put support that came out in Secrets of Eternity a couple of days ago. So yep, Secrets of Eternity, now TCG Legal, came out a couple of days ago on Friday, the, let me check, it's Sunday now, so it's the 16th, so new set that came out on the 16th for North America, might have came out on Tuesday for... Europe and other places, but without further ado, let's go on to this new support. So they got five more new support cards that are of some decency. There might have been a couple others, but they're really not worth playing in my opinion, so I'm just going to go over the the five best. So without further ado, let's start out. We got Cool Put Monolith, so a new $30 secret rare. Congratulations, Konami. <laughs> And it's really good. It's stats right off the bat, really good. 2400 normal monsters, so you can pendulum summon this guy back. That's 2400 vanilla. It's a level 5, so you can tribute one and then summon this guy if you really want to. And then if you have a carrier in your pendulum zone, it boosts him up to 2700. So, so the fact is, obviously, you cannot special summon monsters except quills. And in, in during the end phase, if you tributed summon this turn, you could draw a number of cards equal to the number of cool monsters you tributed for a tribute summon. So that could be really good, especially if you want to go for towers or the new sky base, be able to draw three. Last time I checked, Graceful Charity, and drawing three is really good in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so there you go, you tribute one for disc, or you, with a sacrifice, equipped to do one of these, or if you tribute two for disc, I mean end phase, draw two. What makes this card really good is that it's a, a skill one so if you go scout, scout's a skill 9, this is a skill 1, so just makes it that more convenient. Of course, Kunami had to do that, but I mean, congratulations again, Kunami. But yeah, this card, really good. Everyone is going to be playing at least one. I heard some people think only one's needed personally. I would probably recommend playing maybe two. I mean, you can, you can search it out with the lovely uh, summoner's art, so I mean, maybe you might just want to play one, but I mean, whatever. One or two, probably not three. That's a little overkill. But, I mean, again, really good support card. Just let you draw more cards. It reminds me of Super Rejuvenation, because during the end phase, you drew cards up to the number of dragons tributed. And this card is like you draw cards up to the number of quills tributed. So, I mean, they ban Super Rejuvenation, but make they make a card just like it. So, going on to the next card, we got Quill Put Strelf. A, what is this, level 8? I think that's 8. So, level 8 skill 1 a really good effect so it's pendulum effect all quill monsters gain 300 attack obviously you can only special summon quills and it has the good old first like half paragraph of a effect that says you can tribute some or you can normal summon without tributing if you do it's 1800 blah 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 it's unaffected by ranks lower or ranks or levels lower than that and here we get go to the the nitty gritty so when this card is tributed summoned by a tributing a quill monster you can target one card on the field Return to the hand, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. So, that can be really good. I mean, Fiendish Chain. I mean, Fiendish Chain is not already good against Quill Put, but I mean, that's just going to be a lot worse. Things like what? I think Bottomless Trap Hole. Yeah, I don't think you can Bottomless. You can Solemn Warning it, though. So, someone called an admi admin on that on me about Solemn Warning, a Stealth. Yeah, you can because it never hit the field, so you can't use the effect, but. Again, really good card. I mean, if you combo this off with Carrier or Helix with a Sacrifice, you'll be able to have a, a 2800 beater that is unaffected by level 7s or lowers, and you'll be able to bounce free stuff and get free advantage off the Carrier to bounce another card or, or bounce another monster, and then Helix can pop another... Spell and Trap. So if you Pendulum Summon these two, tribute it for the stealth, you're going to be netting a lot of advantage in the game should be ending shortly after that, in my opinion. So, yeah, these two cards, really good. Going on to uh, Aku Fort Sky Base. So, it's just like Towers, but it has a different effect. So, 2900 attack. The only downside is that it's a level 9 out of 10, so it's only unaffected by level 8s, which, I mean, is really good because there's not a lot of level 9s in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. But anyway, yeah. A quill port sky base so requires three cannot be special summoned and it is unaffected by spell and traps and monsters blah 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 just like killer and then now uh, to the nitty gritty so once per turn you can target what monster opponent controls take control until the end phase so I mean pretty good just more snatch steel light cards I mean come on Kunami really but anyway personally I think killer is better just because it has that extra hundred attack it's a level 10 and I mean all special summon monsters lose 500 attack and defense, which really, really hurts, because, I mean, 
even, you know, Burning Abyss, even if they go for an acid golem, they can't even kamikaze because it loses that attack. And plus, I mean, making your opponent take or discard one monster from their hand or side of the field is pretty good. But don't get me wrong, taking control monsters is good, but the only downside is that it is only to the end phase. So that's Sky Base for you. Going on to. Oh my god, not even going to pronounce this, but Shephalopod. So, cool put Shephalopod. Uh, skill 9, all cool put monsters gain 300. Or, no, 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 no. All monsters your opponent controls lose 300 attack. That's its pendulum effect, and its regular effect is just like all the other ones. And then finally, at the end, it's a level 7, by the way, so it does require two tributes. So, that's kind of unfortunate. But, I mean, its effect is. If your opponent has more monsters in the graveyard than you do, you can gain life points equal to the difference, 300. Yeah, not good, but if you do inflict the same amount of damage to your opponent, so that can be pretty good, especially late game. The only problem is, I mean, it's really, I mean, against, against Burning Abyss late game, this card can put in a lot, and I mean a lot of work, but I mean, other than that, it doesn't really seem that worth it. It's terrible in the mirror match, it's terrible early game. The fact that it requires two tributes is not that optimal, and... Yeah, I mean, I mean, but I mean, against Shadows and Burning Abyss late game, it can put in work, so maybe people will side deck it, I don't know, personally I haven't had anyone play this on me, but I mean, it has a kind of interesting effect, one of those sacky effects that can just end the game like that. So, yeah, going on to the last card of my opinion, this one is the best one in my opinion, Soul Transition, man, Konami, why did you make this card a card? So if you control no special summon monsters, you can tribute one face up level 4, normal summon to set monster, draw 2 cards... Really, draw two cards, and then it has some random restrictions that don't even matter because it's a trap. You can only activate one per turn. You cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate it. So I mean, if if, if it's a trap, I don't know how you're magically going to special summon on your opponent's turn unless you're playing random scapegoats or something along those lines in your deck. But anyway, Soul Transition, very broken card, especially with Carrier and Helix. I mean, if you go first turn, it makes going first even worse. For, or even better for this deck, because, I mean, you could just summon the carrier and this guy, and then once they go for, what, an Exceed, like an Ophion, just activate Soul Transition, tribute the carrier, free Pot of Greed, and then carrier bounces back the the Ophion, and you can't even use Pandemic, so that's just annoying, that's just really annoying, and, I mean, the fact that you can use it in the mirror match with Helix, and then Helix can destroy the Scout once they play it, and you get a free Pot of Greed, so, very, very broken card it is. Again, a secret rare going for a lovely $23 right now at this moment. But anyway, that's the support. In my opinion, this is the best card they got, without a doubt. This guy's really good, too. This guy's good. And this guy's really sacky and situational. And then this guy can come out of nowhere and steal games. So anyway, that's my thoughts on these new cards. Leave your thoughts below in the comments section. And yeah, until next time, thank you guys for watching, as always. And until next time, this is Dog. Signing out.